Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Celtic players dominate the nominations for PFA Scotland Player and Young Player of the Year awards. The SPFL released the playoff dates. And former Motherwell keeper Cammy Duncan has died at aged 51. Yeah, just a few of the talking points on tonight's programme in the company of Alan Ruff and I'm delighted to say the PFA Scotland Player Liaison Officer or, uh, in other words, the former Hibs and Livingston uh, midfielder Stuart Lovell. Delighted to have uh, Stuart along with us uh, on the day when the nominations for the Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year uh, have been announced. We'll get to that in the next couple of minutes. Let's have a look at the back page headlines that greeted you this morning. In the Daily Record, first of all, and as you can see, the story that's catching everyone's eye, Brighton and Hove Albion looking at Stuart Armstrong. And there's speculation that uh, Aberdeen's duo, Kenny McLean and Graham Shinney, could be in line for a Scotland call-up. Uh, what about the Sun newspaper this morning, Blue Van Man? This is in reference to a possible move by Chelsea for Virgil van Dijk, which would net Celtic close to uh, £5.5 million in a sell-on clause they had. And also Neil Lennon being linked there with a move for Stephen Whitaker. Uh, he's one of seven Norwich City players uh, being released today. And also in the Daily Mail, as you can see, uh, the speculation now on every player coming and going. Uh, this time it's uh, Hozo Shimanovic, who is being linked with a move to Sevilla, Espanyol, Torino once again. You can throw them all in there. Uh, and that's just a few of the back page headlines we will be discussing. Um, of course, uh, five and a half million pounds for Virgil van Dijk. That would be some... Uh, windfall for Celtic, Ruffy. Yeah, it's a fantastic <laughs> deal. Whoever negotiated that, obviously they saw a, a lot in the young guy. You know, I think we saw a couple of years. It, it was fantastic and uh, got a good move. But uh, no, that's that's a, an excellent deal by Celtic. Yeah, and, and the other aspect of it, uh, I think when we go through week in, week out, getting closer to Scotland internationals, um, there's always a team and a set of fans who suggest that a player should be involved in the squad. And uh, just looking at Kenny McLean and Graham Shinney there, the Aberdeen fans have been banging on about uh, both these players for the whole season, Stuart. Yeah, talented players. Uh, and, you know, obviously right in front, right under the, the Scotland manager's nose, playing in the, um, the SPFL Premiership. So these guys have been incredibly consistent in the, you know, the second best team in Scotland for a while now. So, of course, they're getting plaudits and, uh, and they deserve recognition and, and hopefully they'll get an opportunity to get a call-up. Mm, just uh, on the uh, story there, Ruffy, about two or three players uh, that might interest Scottish clubs. I mean, of the seven players that have been released by Norwich City, mm -hmm. Stephen Whitaker's one that's linked to Hibs. I can see that <coughs> coming back home. Uh, John Ruddy's been released and there's also Kyle Lafferty as well um, that might interest a few clubs up here. Yeah, well, obviously there's certain clubs <coughs> up here that don't have the money to go into the market the market so obviously anybody who's free of contract <coughs> come up they're just negotiating with the player uh, and that's the kind of player that they'll be trying to identify and I'm sure there'll be lots lots more as uh, we'll find out as the season goes on. Yeah okay let's get into the meat and bones of the main press conference today uh, at three o'clock the nominees for the PFA player of the year were announced uh, of course the big showcase gala awards ceremony is on Sunday at the Hilton. Here are the four nominees He's in question, Stuart Armstrong, Moussa Dembele, Scott Sinclair and Johnny Hayes of Aberdeen. So it's dominated by Celtic players, as you would expect in this season when they're uh, chasing a treble and only Aberdeen uh, can thwart them now in the Scottish Cup final at the end of May. Uh, so let's talk about the qualities of all. Stuart Armstrong, what a season it's been for him, Stuart, because not only that, he's celebrating, uh, you know, he's, he's in the Scotland squad and made one of the best debuts Gordon Strachan has ever seen. Yeah, I don't think you could argue with that. Um, big fan of, of Stuart's um, since, his, since his introduction into the first team as a kid at Dundee United. And um, obviously it was, a, it, was, it was an interesting signing when Celtic took a punt on him. I wouldn't say that his first season went as well as he would have liked under Ronnie Dyler, but there's no question that he has uh, blossomed under Brendan Rodgers. Brendan has, has got more out of him uh, in terms of uh, his contribution 
with the ball. I would say he's a creative player, but scored a lot of goals as well. Scored a lot of goals this year and some really good goals, important goals. And he has become a mainstay. I mean, when Brendan's picking his, his best team, I'm sure that he is one of the first names uh, on the team sheet, which uh, you know, which tells you everything you need to know about him. And then no great surprise that the, 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 the two eye-catching forwards um, in uh, Dembele and Sinclair, I think they were nailed on to make the shortlist. And the only question really was, Will, will the shortlist be made up of a fourth Celtic player or will it be someone from, from out with uh, Celtic? And I don't think anyone could argue that Johnny Hayes has had another terrific season, was, was on the shortlist last year. So great for him to show that uh, players, you know, playing consistently well. And they're four really exciting players, I'll say that, I think is a brilliant shortlist, really good standard. Yeah, I mean, Johnny Hayes is a player that we like, Ruffy. He's mm -hmm. got a trick in him as well. And when he plays, usually Aberdeen mm -hmm. know they're onto a winner. Yeah, I think it's fantastic that the players from all the other clubs have identified, you know, a player out with Celtic, you know, who has had a fantastic season. And you're quite rightly saying that when, when Aberdeen play, it's usually because Johnny Hayes uh, is creating havoc. And all credit to him for getting nominated there. I thought it would have been a, a Celtic whitewash, but no. Well done to him. Yeah, and I just, I mean, Stuart aside, because obviously it's at the nomination stage, and I don't think, uh, knowing Fraser as I do, the <laughs> chief executive of the PFA, <laughs> nobody in your department knows who's won it <laughs> until about, you know, maybe a couple of hours before on the day, because it's all locked tight. Um, but, Ruffy, from our point of view, uh, we were discussing the fact that maybe, as far as the players concerned, you always think timing has everything to do with it. With Moussa mm -hmm. Dembele maybe picking up the injury, you know, he was yeah. blistering through the season with 32 goals. I thought he was going to get 40, which has mm -hmm. cost me a meal out with you. But mm -hmm. um, but Sinclair's been consistent throughout. Yeah, I, I think Sinclair and Johnny Hayes have been the two consistent ones. I think Scott and Armstrong for the probably last two thirds of the season to just come to the fore in the Scotland team playing absolutely well with his club so for me it's Sinclair yeah I think Sinclair has had an outstanding season uh, right from the start I think he's been fantastic the goals he scores you know the link up play that he has and everything so that, that would be my vote I'm not saying it's a, it's a player's vote yeah and with that in mind he's one of those players that Scotland seems to have revitalised him, galvanised him, kick-started his career again. I mean, he's only in the last, what, 24 hours been quoted, Stuart, as mentioning that he has finally joined a club where he, he feels at home, accepted, feels as if he can really express himself. Yeah, I think that's a lot to do with the manager. You know, there's no question that, um, you know, when Brendan came in, we were interested to see, uh, as neutrals, what backing he would get from the board. You kind of thought that, with respect to Ronnie Dyla, I felt it was pretty likely that Brendan was going to get more financial backing from the Celtic board. Otherwise, how would they get him into the job in the first place? Because, you know, you think about the marquee signings that, uh, that, that he has made for Celtic this year, but there was no bigger marquee signing than Brendan Rodgers himself, you know, to have a, a manager of his calibre. And, you know, his two big name signings in the summer were Dembele and Sinclair, and here we are at the end of the season, these guys nominated on the shortlist, quite rightly, I think. So um, Sinclair is a, is a talented player, and I agree with Ruffy that he has been incredibly consistent, you know, which for a forward player, goal scorer or creative player, is, is more difficult, I believe, than a goalkeeper or defensive-minded player. I think it's much harder for, for forwards to be consistent right throughout the season, and he has been superb. Um, Dembele, I think if the vote was taking place, maybe at uh, Christmas, you, you'd, you'd, have, you'd have made him favourite. Yeah. Who knows uh, how things pan out. You never predict what players uh, think. But um, great to see Armstrong in there. You know, young, talented Scottish player. And uh, personally, from a point of view that we represent guys from all of the clubs in all four divisions, I am pleased uh, to see Johnny Hayes in there because I think it's important that we... You know, we recognise that there are good players. Celtic have been head and shoulders above everyone else this season, but you know, they're, they're not the only club with good players. Yeah, absolutely. And the good thing about it, Ruffy, <clears throat> as each year has passed with this event, you see representatives from clubs all across the divisions. I mean, it's a fantastic night, as, mm -hmm. as you uh, sometimes remember, sometimes you forget, <laughs> depending on how good our hospitality is for you. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is a great season, uh, night and uh, as players, you know, it, it, it has grown in momentum and you have to give the guys credit for that. 
Uh, most of the clubs come along, uh, and it's uh, even for the clubs down the divisions. It's a big, big day. Out. You know, it's a it's a massive day to have a player in your team nominated. You know, it keeps the buzz in the dressing room going. Everybody's excited. They all go along. Will he get it? You know, and any award uh, at the end of the season at any club is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's the one event of the entire season where you can't get a bed on it because it's against the rules. It's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to leave <laughs> the mm-hmm. Players Player of the Year. Uh, coming up after the break, we'll discuss the Young Player of the Year and there are some special ones. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV2. Monday to Friday, you can catch us half past seven at night for a full hour. We'll be delighted uh, with your company, especially our new viewers in Aberdeen, Dundee and Ayr, joining Edinburgh and Glasgow. We're all across the country. And on a Saturday, you can catch us at two o'clock on STV2 for four hours. Reporters at the ground and no shortage of interviews and reaction to the goals as they hit the back of the net. Today, our Boot room guest is former Hibs and Livingston player Stuart Lovell and we'll get Stuart's thoughts on uh, how you can cause an upset in a Scottish Cup final or indeed a Cup final and he knows all about that. We'll get his thoughts on that a little later in the programme. We've been talking player of the year. What about the young player of the year? Here are the uh, nominations uh, revealed this afternoon. Uh, Jason Cummings is in there. Musa Dembele is eligible as well. Kieran Tierney and Patrick Robertson. Ruffy, once again, dominated by the young stars mm-hmm. of Celtic. Yes, again, you know, uh, obviously Kieran Tierney it, it's just leaps and bounds. You know, he's, year on year, he, he gets better, he looks better. You know, he's, he's forced himself into the Scottish team as well. Again, Patrick Roberts, uh, maybe more of a bit player with Celtic, but uh, if every team could have a bit player <laughs> like him, they'd, be one, they'd want to watch because any time he's came on, he's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, we all know about Moose and Dembele. And I was going to ask you, the, the, the Jason Cummins ones, are, are the championship players allowed to vote for? Yeah, the, the, this is maybe the, um, this is the anomaly of, of the voting that when you're voting for player of the year you can only vote for the division that you play in yeah so if you're league two stick to your own division league one etc but obviously when it comes to young player the criteria is that you can vote for a player in any division um but they the, the only criteria is that they have to be 21 or under at the start of the season our rules are slightly stricter than down south that's why with respect i think you had lukaku was nominated for young player last year he was 23 yeah and had played about you know 150 games, first in games, and you're thinking, young player, really? You know, so, you know, you look at these guys, and uh, uh, Tierney's in his second season, Dembele's still relatively new to us, Robert's the same, Cummings is probably the most established, yeah, because he's been in the first team the longest, but but still just a, relatively speaking, he's just a kid, so, um, again, I think what is interesting for me, it's not so much that Celtic have have, have got the majority of the players. It's that Celtic have got that many good young players. Yeah. You know, this is this is an interesting dynamic that I think is that Brendan's obviously brought in is to think I want a blend of youth and experience and to have three fantastic young players nominated for Young Player of the Year, all 21 under at the start of the season. Is um, tells you a story. Tells you the way they're going. Yeah. And, and with money coming into the game, Rafi, you would hope. And this is one of my biggest fears about more and more money when Scottish football eventually comes out of that difficult, dark period of financial constraints on clubs. You would hope that more clubs will embrace that ethos, especially if you see it in the, in the bigger clubs as well. Good mm-hmm. young players coming in, homebred players. Oh, I think that I think the likes of Aberdeen uh, and these clubs have identified that they don't have the money to go out and, and spend on young players, so they've got to bring their own crop through. Uh, we've noticed that at Aberdeen, there's a few guys broke through. Jack's broke through. He's talking about moving on, obviously. But uh, no, I, th- I think clubs are now actively academy-wise uh, see what it's like, you know, to bring... And let's not forget, the supporters like a young player coming through. The yeah. supporters love somebody who's came through the ranks and all of a sudden they're in the first team. That gives it a wee added dimension as well. But no, I, I think now with the financial situation, 
bringing big uh, young players through is uh, a big thing. Mm, and of course, it'll be great for uh, the Hibbies to see Cummings in there because he's been strutting his stuff. I mean, his goals mm -hmm. return in the division has been superb. I mean, he's uh, every week we're on this show mm -hmm. talking about him scoring goals. If yeah. anything, he has to add something to it. Yeah, but I think also you've got to give the manager credit as well because we know that like Jason is, he's, he's a bit of a jack the lad and sometimes he can <laughs> he can go off the... I don't, when I say go off the rails a wee bit, I just mean off the football and rails, maybe get a wee carry away a wee bit excited so I think he's a certain player that needs a manager to put his arm around him and say okay you're not scoring goals you know there's more to the game than this and and whoever manager it is whether it's Alan Stubbs or whether it's Neil they seem to get a reaction from him and I think that can only be a good thing for the young lad because I think he will go quite far in the game. Yep uh, and of course uh, we've got to mention Roberts he is a player of you know £12 million pounds has been paid yeah. for him. He will go back to Manchester City, but I think he'll go back a better player because of his experience mm -hmm. in Scotland. Well, I think, obviously, I don't know if Celtic can afford to, to bring him back again, maybe as a loan, but not financially. But I think they're, they're, they're relying on the young lad, having the experience of playing in Champions League football, playing in front of 50,000 people. And if there ever was a chance that he was going to leave Man City, then I would think Celtic maybe have the first shout because he's realised, you know, if he could make it up here, you know, what a fantastic uh, career he could have. Yeah, absolutely. OK, uh, you've cleared up something for us, uh, Stuart, which I think a number of people will be looking at, is, uh, of course, the... Uh, the nominees and how you can vote for them. You know, obviously the championship, you can actually vote for a young player in there. Um, we've already had the, the nominees for the championship, League One and League Two, out there. No surprise, Cummings finds himself in there. Um, I'm particularly pleased that Stephen Dobby, uh, in fact, uh, I think we've near enough... Ross Forbes on the programme mm -hmm. as well. John McGinn uh, is coming on as one of our guests. Uh, it's a good spread, a good mix. Hebs, as you would expect, Ruffy, because mm -hmm. they've won the championship, are going to feature. Yeah, and uh, we already spoke about Jason Cummins when, and obviously John McGinn, again, wonderful season, broke into the Scotland team. Uh, but I think it's good for the two other lads to get a mention. I think it's good for the clubs that are not such high profile that players out there actually respect that uh, you don't have to be with a big club to get nominated for an award. You can get nominated for being with the smaller clubs and I think that's that's the really good thing about these awards. Well, if you look at Stephen Dobby, you know, with respect to the other guys, he's got, <clears throat> he's got the best pedigree. Mm. He's 34 now, but I, I, I mean, you know, you mentioned about the um, cup finals and how to win a cup final. Stephen Dobby was on the bench for Hibs when I played against him in 2004. Uh, and, and interestingly, he's in far better physical condition now at 34 than he was back then. If you see a picture of him in his <laughs> Hibs kit, you know, he's, he's a little bit tubby. Yeah. You know, uh, for, for a professional footballer, he's not in the best of shape. But what a talent. I mean, what talent this guy has got. And I, I've been dealing with a lot of the guys who film for the club channels to gather all the footage to pull together montages for the championship for league one for league two to get goals in in, in the shortlist for goal of the season and the guy who films for queen of the south sent me uh, about five minutes worth of footage and i would say more than half the goals were stephen dobby's and i kid you not the standard is incredible i mean i i ended up submitting one of his goals into the shortlist for goal of the season and we could have used eight of his goals in the montage mm. of a standard. I'm talking about beating players from outside the box, right foot, left foot, headers. Amazing. And don't forget, this guy was playing in the Premier League in England with Blackpool. Yeah. So anyone who thinks that 34, you know, you're on the way down, I would suggest you watch Stephen Dobby because I was blown away by the standard of his uh, goals this season. It was absolutely amazing. Cummings, everyone knows about, you know, he is, he is a proven goal scorer. And as Ruffy suggested, I think we'll go on to hopefully to bigger and better things. John McGinn, fantastic talent. He is the same. And Ross Forbes, a guy who came through the ranks at Motherwell. Personally, I never understood why they let him go because I think he should be playing in the Premiership all day long. Yeah. You know, really good standard. I mean, these guys... All of these guys could play in the Premiership with, with their eyes shut. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think the only back page headline tomorrow, uh, Ruffy, is uh, Lovell is tubbist. <laughs> I can see it. Never mind racism. <laughs> <laughs> Lovell is tubbist. I mean, how, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't like to see Ferenc Priscus in the final four year. <laughs> There's nothing worse than knocking people who are slightly overweight but still have a good touch. 
<laughs> just speaking for other players who obviously want to mention that. Um, here's uh, League One nominees for <laughs> Sunday's uh, big dinner. And uh, as you can see, Liam Buchanan, Jordan Kirkpatrick, Danny Mullen and... Andy Ryan, particularly delighted for Ryan as well. He's gone to Airdrie and he really has got his head down and started playing. Good player. Again, you know, uh, someone who came through the ranks with Hamilton Ackies. Uh, and I would suggest that um, maybe he had to t take a step or two backwards to, to go forwards again. I mean, you know, Andy Ryan is way better than League One. And I'm quite sure that he'll have an opportunity to strut his stuff in a higher echelon um, next season or maybe the year after, hopefully with Airdrie, but if not with someone else. Danny Mallon, one of the best up-and-coming up talents I've seen in Scottish football. Forget the fact this guy's playing in League One. He is mustard. I mean, lovely left peg, but can, yeah. can finish <laughs> both feet. Um, just looks a really talented player to me. Jordan Kirkpatrick, another one, uh, was with Hamilton Ackies back in the day. And Liam Buchanan has had more clubs than Jack Nicholas, but um, <laughs> has scored goals where, wherever, whichever club he's, he's been at. Really good finish. And again, I got footage for all of these players, and you want to see the standard of goals that these guys have scored, particularly Buchanan and Mullen. I mean, some fantastic goals. Livy have done a really good job. Delighted to see my old club. Uh, get promoted. Yeah, um, well, we had Liam Buchanan on the programme. Usually what happens, players come on the programme, get a little sprinkling of gold dust and then something really good happens to them, which is great news for uh, Stuart Lovell because he's thinking the racing's on at the weekend. <laughs> Am I going to get a sprinkling of good luck? Um, <laughs> we'll have more news after this break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. Before that short break, uh, we were talking about the nominees for the PFA Player of the Year Awards that's taking place at the weekend at the Hilton Hotel in Glasgow. And I'm delighted to say from the PFA Scotland, uh, Stuart Lovell is our guest, giving us a little insight into uh, some of the players, how it's all selected and... Um, the reaction afterwards is absolutely superb and uh, certainly uh, by the turnout of players alone, Ruffy, you can tell that they really like coming to this gala awards ceremony and there are other good awards ceremonies as yeah. well, may I add, because uh, the football writers will give me pelters if I don't mention them as well. No, I have to say, as uh, I said at the beginning of the show, I think the, the teams get right behind it. Uh, it's a fantastic day out, even when, when I, at my era when I was playing, we all, it was always a, a point that we had a table there. I think it's important as a club that you go along and you meet, you only meet the guys that you play with you know, day, in, in the weekdays, you know, when you're playing. So it's good to meet them socially, it's good to have a wee chat and I think that's what the main thing about the dinner is, everybody getting together uh, and being part of it. Yeah, am I right in thinking the only time there's been a joint winner was with John Hartson and Fernando Rickson? Yes, that is correct. Um, I thought you might have that as one of your quiz questions uh, between <laughs> the breaks. Okay, <laughs> you've let the cat out of the bag on that one. But interestingly, on the back of that, um, you know, I mean, great for those two players and worthy winners, in fairness. But it just didn't sit right that we had joint winners. So we now have uh, players have a second vote. Managers and players now have a second vote in the event of a tie. So if you were to uh, I mean, for example, it was very, very close the year that Michael Higdon won yeah. and Lee Griffiths, who was uh, on loan at Hibs at the time, finished second. And, and the second vote almost came into play. And interestingly, Griffiths had way more second votes and, and would have won on count back uh, yeah. if, uh, if the <coughs> second vote was required. So you hope, given, I mean, I, I guess you, we've got 200 250 vote guys voting in the Premiership, so likelihood of a, of a tie is pretty slim. But we've, we've now got that base covered just in case. Yeah, absolutely. We, we will never forget Michael Higdon as the winner of the PFA <laughs> Awards. It was such a good, was such a good night with yeah, him, Ruffy. I mean, he, he didn't want to come up on stage in the first place because he knew he was going to get leathered. <laughs> yeah. um, but but, uh, but uh, after that, I mean, we had a great time with him. He was a good lad. He was a good winner. Yes, he was a fantastic winner, and it just shows you a player like that who possibly wouldn't have got it 
any other time got it and he enjoyed every minute of it. Okay, he took it to the extremes. <laughs> <and> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but, but, worth, <laughs> but uh, I, I think that's what the. It's good when, when players like that win it. You know, I just think it is. It's just away from the the, the obvious and yeah. uh, and the club getting recognition, as I keep saying as well. I I, I just thought the whole team. You, and the thing about it is, when a player from any particular club wins, you can hear the joy oh, yeah. within yeah. not just him but the other. <laughs> His teammates, his teammates that he's played with all year and whatever, and they get as much joy out of it as the, the person who wins it. Yeah, absolutely. Although I, I, I would counter that by saying uh, there, are, there are a few previous uh, yeah. announcements that have come out, and, and somebody who thought they were an absolute stonewall no. to win goes, You're kidding. No. <laughs> or no, words I, to that no, effect, I, I, but I it's thought, still good. I thought the best one was that you might remember what player it was when you were interviewing him and you said, uh, <laughs> It's, it's been a fantastic season for you. Uh, uh, I suppose you'd like to thank your teammates as well. And they went, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. It's, yeah. That's it's all about it. me. <laughs> yeah, it's all about me. That's exactly what I was thinking when he was up there. And, and don't think I, I, I let him away with it. Um, just on that, we haven't forgotten about League Two. Here's the nominations um, for uh, League Two. Uh, of course, a uh, guy we always stay in touch with on uh, social media, Bobby Lynn. He's always there or thereabouts at our broth. Uh, Thomas O'Brien, Thomas Riley, and Shane Sutherland as well. Probably one of those players, Shane Sutherland. No disrespect to the others. They, they, they probably fit this as well. You might tell me di differently, um, Stuart, but Shane Sutherland's one of those players who could play at a higher level again. Yeah, yeah. Came through the ranks at Inverness Cali Thistle, and I think... Uh Last summer and this summer, you know, had bigger clubs sniffing around. Obviously, he's from uh, way up north. He's from that neck of the woods. So it's obviously a good fit for him with his work. He's had a fantastic season, scored uh, a barrel load of goals. I'm pretty sure he'll end up top goal scorer in, in League Two. Uh, and it's interesting because, um, you know, again, Elgin, who might just about make the playoffs, they've actually got two guys nominated in the shortlist and... and you know, it's, it's the other clubs. You would have thought our Broth and Forfa would have the, the lion's share of the nominees. They're fighting for the title uh, the weekend, but one each, and it's, and it's actually Elgin. And, and uh, I know that uh, even though the, nom the, the, the um, teams of the year haven't been announced yet, I know that Elgin have got great representation in League Two Team of the Year. So uh, it's always interesting. It's, 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 um, you know, it's, it's not political in the low divisions. The guys mm. just kind of judge it very much on who they played against, who's impressed them. In the, uh, in, the, in the games that they've actually come against uh, direct opposition and that's how they pick the, the teams whereas I think higher up is a little bit more political. Yeah, um, I, I would say this in all seriousness that because <clears throat> as life goes on, changes, um, people's lifestyle changes, uh, the, the, the conduct of players is, is exemplary of the, the, the top professionals because quite simply, I mean, the, the playoffs have been announced, the dates mm -hmm. for the playoffs, Ruffy. Some of the players who are nominated will be involved in, in big games, so they've got to keep themselves mm -hmm. sharp. They know they're going to be continuing their training. Um, you know, the likes of uh, the Celtic and Aberdeen players anyway, they're going to be involved in the Scottish Cup final in the remaining games, but uh, the playoffs have been con confirmed and it'll all start from Tuesday the 9th of May um, as far as, you know, the, the top four from the championship. Uh, Hibs go straight up. The other three have to play against each other to eventually mm -hmm. play the second bottom team from the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we spoke about it nearly all season. You know, it's going to be important now. You know, obviously, many games you play in the playoffs. So obviously, the manager will be having a word with your ear when there's any do's like this. You have to go along, be uh, sensible, because uh, you've got big rewards coming at the end of the season. But I think it's modern day football now is more responsible than the players at my era were. Yeah. You know, sometimes you would have taken your eye off it for a wee minute. But I think players now. Uh, really know what's at stake and they will behave themselves yeah, in the night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if if you had uh, if you won the award this Sunday, Ruffy, <laughs> I'd probably need to remind you on the Tuesday that you'd won it uh, and, then, yeah. and then the search and I've, for and the I've, award. And I've, <laughs> and I've missed the playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, uh, possibly. Of course, by the time, the one thing I would say, by the time we get to the final on the 28th of May, I think... You know, you've got two legs of it. The 25th of May is the Thursday, and then the final is the 28th. I just think it's, I think it's galvanised the Scottish football. I think it's really, uh, you know, lit up the the, the excitement at, towards the end of the season, Stuart. Because yeah. if Hamilton and Hibbs was anything to go by, suddenly you think the first leg it's over, and then the second leg it is not. 
it's very exciting. I really like the concept. I have to be honest, my own personal view of the way they've set up the playoffs, it's loaded too much in favour of the Premiership team. Um, that, that season that, that Hamonaki's beat Hibs is the only season that the, the team from the Championship has beaten the team from the Prem because, of course, the team from the Prem kind of sits there, the team who finishes 11th, and they, have, they, they, they watch the teams who finish 3rd and 4th in the Championship knock 10 bells out of each other. <laughs> and then the winner of that plays against the team who finishes 2nd, and they knock 10 bells out of each other. And then the team in the Premiership, who's yeah. finished 11th, mm -hmm. who's had several weeks rest and recuperation mm. and preparation, plays the team that's, chances are, probably pretty knackered by the time mm. they play them. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think that... I think we spoke about it on the show, that the only thing we would like, or not me, but we would like change possibly is the, the final game being a gala day. Yeah. Yeah. No, a big a neutral like, venue. in England. Yeah, like a big neutral day, venue. Big yeah. day, one off game, I agree. winner takes all. But I also agree with what Stuart's saying. I, I'm in your camp. I think it should be balanced yeah. so that you get two semi finals and then a final. It should be, in my view, the same in all of the playoffs because in, in the other divisions, it's the second bottom plays against the team who finishes fourth. Yeah. And second and third, they play off. So that's, that's your semi final, if you like. And then, albeit the final is is over two legs, but I, I think Ruffy's, uh, you know, his uh, principle of what you would look at to bring the final to a, a gala game and a, and a neutral venue is the way forward. Because obviously, all the playoff finals in England are played at Wembley uh, and, and Cardiff before that, and yeah. um, and I think for me that's the way forward because we're still making it. I don't want to say easy; it's not easy, but we're still making it easier for the Premiership club to retain their status. And I think, you know, for example, the year that Rangers uh, ended up playing Motherwell, you know, they had to play Tuesday, Saturday, uh, three weeks on the spin. In, in every game was massive. You know, yeah. they, they, I think they beat uh, Queen of the South and then they had to play Hibs over two legs. And eventually, by the time they got to Motherwell, they, would, they were done. Uh, and, 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 we, and, and we know what happened. So I think that uh, for, for the teams who finished third and fourth in the championship this season, it's a big ask to be able to come through the playoff process as it's set up at the moment. If it were changed to the way that we're suggesting, I think it would be fairer. Yeah, OK. Uh, coming up after the break, just in case uh, you're an Aberdeen fan looking at the bookies' odds on the Scottish Cup final and thinking, is there any point in turning up? Uh, this man has a great tale to tell about underdogs winning a cup final when everybody had written them off. We'll hear more from Stuart Lovell. We'll also look at some of the other gossip of players coming and going. Uh, join us right after this quick break, if you can, on The Football Show. Yeah, Ed McGeady, um, he uh, had a big move to Spartak Moscow, Ruffy, and uh, I think he was also, I think he lost his way a wee bit at Everton, mm -hmm. but he seems to have just found his mojo again, shall we say, at Preston. Yeah, uh, the, the year that he won the, the, the both uh, trophies was had a fantastic season, uh, and I think everybody was expecting him to kick on to bigger uh, things, but obviously he chose to go to Russia, whether that was a mistake or not, yeah. uh, only he can tell. But yeah, he had a spell at uh, Everton. We met him when we were down there. But uh, yeah, sometimes that happens to players so that uh, when they move about, they don't really get. Sometimes they wish that they possibly stayed at one of the places where they're yeah. enjoying it rather than chasing it. Yeah, let me tell you, Stuart, um, financially it wasn't a mistake <laughs> going to Russia. I was, I was just <laughs> thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, they did right with the rubles, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, but I, I often think, you know, sometimes I, I think fans have a different uh, perception of what the game should be all about for players. Yeah. Loyalty, whatever. I, I mean, uh, I think uh, Francisco Sandaza, who's come out in the press today, and he has savaged Rangers for the way he was treated when the whole uh, club was going to administration and mm -hmm. liquidation. You know, players are just like everybody else. They've got a job, they've got to take care of their families. Um, You've you got to look after yourself. It was an unusual move... Um for Aiden to go to Russia. Uh, I think a lot of people were taken by surprise. But if you know Aiden, he's a, he's a bright guy, mm. really, really bright guy. And I think that he obviously wasn't phased about the fact he was moving to a country which is a long way from the UK, but also to take on a different language. 
I mean, you know, they've even got more letters in the alphabet in Russia than we have. Yeah. So that wouldn't be an e easy culture to get used to. But and I thought he was I mean, and he stuck it out. You know, I mean, he didn't he didn't chuck the towel in. He wasn't the one that kind of thought, oh, I mean, six months, I need to get out of here. You know, he stuck it out. And I think um, obviously a strong character, um, a talented player. I mean, you know, Aiden was around when I was still playing back in the day and uh, he was devastating on his day. I mean, you know, there are very few guys who have won player and young player in the same season, and you have to be exceptional to do that. Which, which you know, he was, and he's still, still, still a good player, doing well, good things down south. Yeah, you mentioned in your playing days, um, of course, you're part of a team uh, at Livingston that shocked everyone at Hamden one day. I can remember it so clearly, if only for the fact that almost 95% of the crowd had left by the time you were handed the trophy. Yeah, well, it really was like that. I think. Um, I remember in the lead up to the cup final um, against Hibs, I went round to a lot of the um, schools in the Livingston area, uh, along with a lot, a lot of my teammates, because we were kind of, you know, drumming up interest, drumming up support. But um, we were also trying to, you know, get more fans there to back <laughs> us because we knew it was going to be very lopsided. And I kid you not, I think it was about 40,000 Hibs fans compared to about eight from Livingston. Uh, and I do remember lifting the trophy and saying to one of the guys, Seems awfully quiet in here, <laughs> um, and uh, and you know, of course, we 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 had our full contingent there. But um, when you looked round, it wasn't even three quarters empty. It was more than that. I mean, it was staggering. It was yeah. something to behold, but didn't detract from the day for us. You know, it was it was an amazing, amazing win. And uh, when you look at Livingston now, obviously, good to see him back up in the championship. But it's been tough times for them. You know, in 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 the past uh, few years. Yeah, um, I think they were spoilt for a number of years with the team getting promoted and qualifying for Europe and then winning a trophy. Um, and I said that at the time, that, you know, enjoy it while it lasts because it, it doesn't necessarily. And sometimes when you <clears> get <throat> such a unique occasion like that, there is a, a bond between the players. Is there a strong bond when you guys, I mean, you look at the, the, the players that were all celebrating that day, it's a great picture of happiness and maybe, you know, I can see Marv there with a bit of shock in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a great group. Um, you know, it's funny just looking at the team there. I was, I was actually with David Bingham uh, last weekend on Sunday uh, at charity function and uh, I got a, an email from Oscar Rubio our uncompromising Spanish centre half, he, he emailed me just earlier on this afternoon. So no, you're right, it, it really was a, a great group, an unusual demographic. We had you know, quite a few foreign guys from, from different uh, countries. And, but what, I mean, I was captain at the time, and the one thing I tried very hard to do was to try and bring the, the lads together, because I remember speaking to Jim Leishman and Davey Hay and John Robertson, who were on the coaching staff, and they said, you know, it doesn't matter if you've got guys who speak different languages. If you can bring the guys together and avoid having any cliques, you can create a good team spirit. And we had that in spades. You know, we, we, we had a fantastic group of foreign players, guys who really understood that what country they were playing in. And it was up to them to adapt as opposed to the, you know, to, to the home base players. Um, and it really helped us to have guys like Marv, who was a, uh, you know, just a, a really amiable cup I and mean, you couldn't fail to get on with a guy. He was just yeah. an absolute gentleman. Uh, guys like David Fernandez, who was, uh, you know, he was, he was just um, happy-go-lucky, just didn't have a negative bone in his body. And, and it was a great group of players to play with. I mean, my, my most surprising and enjoyable time was playing with Livingston where, you know, we punched above our weight, you know, season after season. Yeah, and I spotted you with champagne there. Did you win man of the match that day? I did, yeah. Um, <laughs> if I'm honest, I have to say I think there was an element of bias for the guy that chose it because the guy was the game was actually on Channel Five, fun enough. And the guy who was doing co-commentary that day was Ray Houghton, the former um, Liverpool and Republic of Ireland player. And I played with Ray at, at, at uh, Reading, um, and you know he was one of my idols because I was a big Liverpool fan when I was a kid. And I think there was an element of bias in his selection. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't think I was our best player by any means. I did okay. I had yeah. a decent game, but there were better players for sure. I'm glad you said it was on Channel 5. Um, had it been on at half 10, 11 o'clock at night on Channel 5, Ruffy might have watched it, but that's about the only time you veer over <laughs> to, to, to Channel 5. So you would have completely missed it, Ruffy, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, okay, let's talk about some things that are obviously uh, kicking in um, in the news today. We'll, we'll look at the Champions League uh, semi-final um, tomorrow's game uh, rather than tonight's which is well underway now um, but one sad bit of news I think we've got to talk about um, Ruffy is a former goalkeeper um, 
I, I probably will miss a, a mm -hmm. couple of clubs. Played at Air United, um, played at Motherwell as well, Albion Rovers, you know, and I, I'm, I was racking my brain trying to think of some of the other clubs that he played for, but at 51 years of age, Cammy Duncan has mm -hmm. passed away, uh, lost his battle with the cancer. He played for Partick Thistle too. Um, I mean, an absolute tragedy, and all our uh, thoughts and prayers and condolences to the family. Yeah, it's obviously tragic, you know, obviously Cammy, uh, as you've just said there, uh, was at a few clubs in Scotland and I'm sure the supporters will, will recognise he's worth it. all the clubs he was at, a terrible thing to, to die so young and we all feel for his family obviously, but I'm sure the clubs that he played with will maybe do something for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Uh, switching just to some of the other news which has dominated most of the papers, um, which again is relevant to yourself, Stuart. We're talking about the glamour of awards ceremonies. Uh, the very unglamorous side of football is the fact that uh, there's about, what, 95 players that have all been listed who are free agents in the summer. Some uh, who even have contracts uh, will be looking for new employers. That's the difficulty of uh, the industry we, you know, we're all working in. Yeah, it is a cutthroat, cutthroat business, um, as, as Ruffy well knows. And, um, I mean, a lot of the players that we deal with, um, you know, come the summer are, are young players, guys who have, you know, maybe finished their apprenticeship with their, with their clubs in the, uh, in the premiership or the championship and haven't managed to get a, an extension to their contract. And so they're looking to try and remain in the game. Uh, and you know we do all that we can through our showcase exit trials to give guys an opportunity to come along and train, keep their fitness levels up, and then we put on a showcase game for managers and coaches of all the clubs in the SPFL to come along and have a look. So you try and do your best to keep as many of these guys in the game as possible. But um, you know, I guess because of the financial strengths that a lot of clubs are working under, they're looking at their squad numbers, and you know they're going to be very selective in terms of who they keep on and. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it, it's the different side of the professional game that people aren't used to. People like to talk about the glamour and the money that's within the game. But um, in my experience working with the Players' Union, that is not really relevant to the majority of our members. You know, these guys are not uh, rolling in cash and, uh, uh, and they're not living the lifestyle that a lot of people think footballers uh, do live. You know, that's probably more relevant to the to the big hitters down south. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so on that basis, Robbie, I don't want to hear you ever moaning about your 12-year contract at Party Crystal again, <laughs> OK? You, you were there, you were secure, you could pay your mortgage. It's as simple as that. Um, just briefly, um, there's a semi-final tomorrow. Um, who do you think is going to win it? Monaco or Juventus first leg, briefly? I'm kind of disappointed that they've drawn against each other because it would have been great to see them play against the, um, you know, the, the Madrid clubs. Um, my my heart says Monaco because I think they've been incredibly exciting to watch. I mean, you know, just all out attack, um, just a brilliant side, and they have surprised everyone with the teams they've knocked out. But your head says my Juventus. head says Juventus. Big goal scorers Monaco, but not tomorrow. <laughs> OK, there you are. It's been an absolute joy having uh, Stuart Lovell as our guest. Uh, we wish Stuart and the rest of the PFA uh, a great night on Sunday at the Player of the Year Awards from Ruffy and myself. Good night.